Uh, I'm Ram Akela, and welcome to the session about app analytics. Is everyone wide awake? Yes, yes? okay, very good. Um, so what is different about the app analytic world? Uh, what is different is you've always heard about users meeting the firm, right, and e-commerce. What we have assembled is a bunch of panelists who will actually tell you really at a detailed level from the trenches through the boardroom to blue sky, what is going on? Um, and what we want to do is we want to start with the perception, uh, with the understanding of every user, right? What you care about is what do the user care about and then what do they want to buy in the sense of uh, retail? And you want to start there and we have people who actually own every commercial action out of two in the world, or in the US at least, and possibly the world eventually. And we're going to look at that very granular view, which can also give you a macro view of how different sectors are doing, but we want to take a macro view, and then put that together with a whole bunch of different user perspectives. So once you do that, then you have the so-called 360 degree view that everybody talks about, but you're going to hear about the challenges and what how you can make that happen, but also how do you then use that information to really get at an understanding of the user and the user's behavior. And you'll hear about some very interesting integration perspectives, including microdata, sensors, and so on, and experiments underway. Uh, and so some of these methods are not just for the big players in the retail space, but they, they let the smaller guys really put data together more easily and analyze it more easily to understand the customer behavior. Now, the other part of it is everybody talks of customer's behavior, but what is very intriguing about what you'll also hear is a shift from using machines to understand user behavior to have other people in the company take action versus today you'll hear about machines actually taking actions so that you can track user behavior, you can actually take actions based on that, and then see how they respond, and then keep tracking it again. So the complete closed loop. So if you see in the detail, it's very different from the e-commerce of uh, yesteryear, right? So you're gonna have people give you all these perspectives, um, and we should have a really exciting time, I think, with people who are uh, full of go. And uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce uh, 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 by the way, the moderator is Abnish from uh, Plum Slice, uh, uh, and nice juicy fruit, right? But by the way, so uh, the way I think of the analytics part is, think about it, you've got a nice fruit, tough, uh, 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 you know, shell, right? Crack it. And then you've got this uh, leathery skin, you cut it, right? And you have this nice juicy plum, you've got to eat it, right? But the problem is, it's not that simple. You've got to cook it, you've got to do different things, right? So the analytics is really all the stuff, and that's what you're going to hear. And as I think one of them pointed out, you've got to do all of it together. So we've got Abnish, uh, who will be actually really getting people to tell you all the interesting stories. Uh, Christy uh, from Bloombridge. Uh, Krish Mantabhargara from uh, First Data. And finally, we've got Navneet from uh, Singh from SKP. Without further ado, welcome. So you just saw the heat map for big data and a lot of talk about how big data can enable companies to think what are customers gonna buy next and how much are they gonna pay for it. Then why was it that retail was moderate? It was yellow, it was not red, right? So there has been, over the last two years, there has been a lot of talk about the technology behind big data. There has been a lot of talk about what's coming in the future. What about today? So one of the reasons you see, and we worked with a lot of retailers, and I, I used to work for retailers before Plum Slice, is retail, and, and like many other companies, it's more about if we invest $1 today, when are we gonna get those $2 back, right? That's why when we talk to retailers, it's all about business value. So we've got an amazing panel here today who are gonna talk about their experiences, and, and more so in the context of business value, more so in the concept of what's happening today. So I, I think it'll be a fairly interesting conversations. But before we get started with the Q&A uh, with, the, with the panel, I just have a quick question for you guys. How many of you are involved today as a vendor or as a customer with big data in, in any way, shape, or form? Can when we see a raise of hands? Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, how many of you have seen 
return on already seen, not something you're going to see in the future, already seen return on investment in your new big data initiatives? Much smaller percentage, right? So I think that's the hot topic that the, the retailers as, and other industries are looking at is everyone agrees with the value that it will bring in potentially in the future. Everyone agrees that's the next thing. But to get through the execution challenges, to get to that point where we, where we start seeing that, I think that's where I think individuals like this who are already in this in the forefront leading some of those initiatives uh, will, help, will, help, will help us get there. So I guess my, my first question to the panel, and Christy, we can start with you and go one by one, is can, can each of you share with us examples of big data initiative generating direct business value today? So uh, yeah, I mean, I think there are, there are two things that came to mind when I thought about this question. One is, one scale. Actually, so you can leverage the big data applications to generate revenue, and I think it's pretty easy for us to all think about the ROI from that perspective. But we also think about it from scale and total cost of ownership. So if I can use big data to optimize areas that I've never been able to optimize before, um, organic search, how many queries do I see coming into my site, I can optimize a handful of them, maybe a hundred of them, but can I optimize everything that I see? No, and so that's a place that big data can, can be leveraged and help with your total cost of ownership and also help with revenue. The second piece on the revenue side that we've seen a lot um, of success with is personalization. So before, when you thought about personalization, it was let me think about the customer segments and let me come up with something that's quasi-personal. Now I can actually get down to a much more granular level and know, know intricate pieces to personalization, know that particular signals like price only applies to this customer in this category or this designer or this product type, but it doesn't apply to them in others. And so I think, um, you know, as I thought about generating revenue and, and those are two particular applications, but I try to think about the ROI on revenue as well as the TCO piece. So um, let me give you some examples of the types of things that we're seeing. For the benefit of everyone, um, can everyone hear me fine? OK. Um, so how many of you know First Data so that I can put what I'm saying in context? Um, so we roughly see about one of every two transactions in the country. So we are a large you know, payment processing and a multi-channel commerce company. So now if you look at uh, payment data in that perspective, right, so it's, it's sort of what I like to believe is the ultimate signal, where it tells you what pe where people are actually spending money, what are they spending on, what are they buying, what are they not buying, et cetera, et cetera. And so some of the examples that are applications that we are currently focused on that we've seen a lot of success around is uh, putting that to work, both from the smallest of the merchants, you know, the, your, your coffee shops, your bakeries on the, down the street to the largest of the retailers you can think of. Um, and help them understand exactly not just what's happening in their business, you know, because if you look at a lot of the smaller merchants, you know, most of them don't even have a clear understanding of, you know, what they're doing from a daily, weekly, monthly basis, who their customers are, where do they come from, you know, should they invest and spend money in trying to get more customers or get, or get the existing ones to spend more, et cetera, et cetera. And even the largest ones whom you may think have, uh, are very sophisticated, and some of them are, um, have an inside-out view in the sense that they know what, what their customers do with them, but often they don't have much of an idea of what their customers do elsewhere in the economy. And so a big data example, like the way we look at it is, how do you take the combined you know, um, data set, if you will, the payment data for the whole country, and make it work for each and every merchant? You know, whether, uh, put that in perspective. So if a particular merchant, you know, again, I'll take the example of a small guy, if they've made a you know, thousand bucks a day, is that good, is that bad? And what type of customers come in? And what, how are trends that are very local to a particular area uh, are beneficial, how can we make that work for a particular merchant? If you're a large one, again, right, you know, you're spread across the country, you've got multiple locations, those types of things, and often, like, you know, you've got certain stores that perform great, certain ones that don't, and again, why? Why are certain locations behaving a certain way, certain are? So these are some of the areas where, um, you know, we feel that both the combination of uh, the transaction payment data itself 
combined with other POS and other types of data that we're engaged in, uh, has produced some, some tremendous value to, to both the little and the large guys. Direct business value uh, out, of, out of big data and big data analysis. Well, let me tell you how we at SK Planet, SK Planet, by the way, is a uh, shopping platform for both merchants and consumers. And very simply put, the way we generate uh, value, direct business value out of uh, big data analysis is we drive more business and repeat business for our merchants. And we do this by by personalizing the experience, the promotions, giving product recommendations for, for our consumers. And on top of that, what we've done is we're really leveraging uh, sensors like BLE beacons to really get the micro location of consumers to, to track their behavior and their, and their location and so forth, to make the recommendations and the targeted promotions that much more meaningful. And it absolutely results in a direct impact on the amount of business, new business, and repeat business that, that our merchants see in our network. Okay. Thank you. So as a follow-up, if you looked at the marketplace today, especially from the applications perspective, and there was pointed out earlier this morning too, there's a big gap. There are little to no shrink-wrapped applications available around big data. Uh, and the level of complexity involved. And again, there was stuff this morning and I started out as a software developer and I don't understand 80% of the stuff when I see it in front of me when we are talking about the technology aspects, right? So given the level of complexity involved, given the level of investment involved, and you guys touched on it a little bit, but as a follow-up, can you expand on the fact that is big data for big companies only? Or can smaller, to mid-sized companies also think about, in addition to getting insights from companies like yours, could they be doing something directly around big data, or is, are we like a few years away from that? Sure, do you want me to start? Yeah, let's start that way this time. Yeah, uh, so to be quite honest, uh, for small to medium-sized businesses, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to, uh, to do big data analysis because they don't have the resources the infrastructure in place, and you know, a meaningful amount of data to, to, do, to, to do big data analysis. But that's where enablers can come in. So we at uh, SK Planet are an enabler, right? If, if they were to do it by themselves, that would be akin to a user trying to get a movie recommendation using a, a piece of software that only takes his or her viewing history into account. Not everybody's, right? So what we at SK Planet, we, you know, we do what Netflix did for movies, is we aggregate all the data across our merchants and, and use that in an anonymous way to, to generate uh, uh, meaningful insights. So for example, consumer preferences and recommendations based on consumer preferences, it's one thing if you know a consumer's purchase history at one merchant, but it's another altogether if you know their purchase history at all the merchants. And you know, couple that with demographics and then target uh, based on that. So um, you know, when, when the enablers come into the picture, absolutely uh, big data insights can be made available to, uh, to small and uh, medium-sized merchants. Yeah, I'd like to, and, and just to build upon that, you almost have to look at the problem a little differently, right? If you look at the largest of the retailers, you know, there's, there's hardware, there's software, there's services, and then they have to load up the software with the data, and then they see magic, right? But for the smaller guy, you almost have to, it's no longer just, you know, um, software as a service, or it has to be data plus software as a service, so that it's instant on, it's available to them with minimum um, sort of uh, in, you know, investment or expertise from their side. And then combine, with, combine that with some of the things that Navneet was talking about, where how can you leverage the data set of um, the larger merchant base to put it to work for each and every single merchant. And I think that's sort of the key when you look at it from a small merchant perspective. Like we serve roughly six million merchants worldwide, ranging from the smallest of the guys to, to the big ones. 
And in the small ones, the way we are seeing the most, most uh, interest in is, like, where should I open my new store, right? And like, where are my customers coming from? How far do they travel? And how far do they drive to, to get to? And people who shop at my locations, where else do they shop? And even if these are unrelated categories, they're very interesting to the small businesses because they like to co-market. They like to figure out like, where to send the flyers or where to send the emails. So things like that. So these are examples where you know, no individual merchant will not be able to satisfy, you know, uh, uh, solve this problem by themselves. But when you combine like, data plus software and put the, put the larger data set to work, would, the results are tremendous for each and every small guy. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you as a small or medium merchant, you definitely want to add the data. But the other piece of it is you, you don't want the data just to give you some insight that you, then you have to go make a decision on or go act on. I don't have a full team as a small or medium business to actually go look at the data on a regular basis, pull out the insights myself, and then go do the action. And who knows, that might mean taking it to another team and convincing them. You want the big data application to actually drive the action itself and self-optimize. And I think that's where an additional bang for the buck with big data comes in for small and medium. One is if you can leverage bigger data than just yourself. And the second is if you can start acting on it or the system will act on it for you without you having to go manually do everything. Okay, thank you. So for the entrepreneurs in the room, um, and I'll uh, sort of do a, uh, without naming the full, well, plum slice, we, we using uh, big data for, we, we, based on our work with the retailers, we, we found a, an opportunity where we take in a, a, a lot of data, images, reviews, social networks and all, we using that data to understand the trends and also to understand the customer behaviors, how are they searching, what keywords are they using. So this was one opportunity. So for the entrepreneurs in the room, given that you work with customers directly around a lot of data, what opportunities do you think exist in the near term in the next one to three years that you think the industry would be ready for, but there's a gap? If, are there any specific examples that you could provide to, to them today? And Christy, we can start with this. Could you? Oh, sure. Um, well, the really, really good ones I'm keeping to myself, but um, <laughs> I give just, mine away. Just kidding. So. Come um, on, share. No, I, I really like Bloomreach, so I'll give you guys my. I'm staying there. I'll give you my best. Um, I think you know what I've seen around data at merchants, or that we've you know talked to merchants on a regular basis is, you know, this is all great, but I don't have a team of data scientists. So how do I how do I access it? How do I understand what to do with it? How do I interpret it? How can I make decisions such as what should I buy going forward? Um, so all around, you know, there's a wealth of data. It's really cool, but there's only so much I can do. So if you can take that and somehow layer on top of it a very easy, minimal system that works, and you don't have to be a data scientist, you don't have to be a, to be a computer programmer to access it and make decisions on it, I think that would be really powerful. So I would say that, I mean, again, keeping retail as the, as the topic of discussion here, I mean, it's fascinating. The entire industry is getting fundamentally disrupted. And I'll just take a few examples. If you look at, you know, even the most like boring thing like a POS, you know, point of sale device. Traditionally, they have been like client server standalone type devices. And if I, if I were a retailer with 20 stores, I mean, I had to jump through hoops to pull this data from each of these stores and aggregate to find out what is actually selling. Point of sale is getting fundamentally disrupted. You're getting point of sale in the cloud. All of these are interconnected. Now you've got a new set of data set that's becoming available and they're all becoming open architectures. So think, think what happened on the apps on the, on the mobile phone where suddenly it drove a whole set of innovation driving very interesting applications that you can't imagine. The exact same thing is happening at POS where, you know, whether it's inventory management or customer engagement or loyalty marketing or suddenly they now will all have access to point of sale data uh, down to the SKU level, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's a whole area and I believe like lots of very interesting companies are gonna be built, built around that. 
And you can even look at some of the other areas, if you will, right? I mean, what do retailers ultimately care about? You know, customer engagement, marketing is clearly one of them, and I touched upon some of that. Then you've got even supply chain management. You know, the areas that uh, are, are core bread and butter to, to these industries are being fundamentally disrupted. You know, they, you, have, you have new models coming in, you know, where, you know, order online, pick up in store, order in mobile, and have it delivered at home, and intraday, you know, have one place of ordering across multiple retailers, you know, Google Shopping Express type of stuff. All of this is not only disrupting processes, they're also generating new types of data that didn't exist before. And so if you focus on any one of those friction points, you know, where is, where is things, are, are things dropping off the funnel, or where are opportunities to engage with the customer, you can, you can go wild. And so I, I'm, I'm super excited about the space and the type of opportunities that exist. Now, I could go on and on, but I'm sure, you know, I'll, I'll leave some of that. No, that's very well put, Krish. Uh, it's, I mean, if not, I'm going to try and sound as unbiased as possible, but I, I really think the next few years, tremendous opportunities for, for entrepreneurs in, in retail across the spectrum, right? And with the with the advent of things like what I was talking about earlier, sensor devices, BLE based, Wi Fi based, or even micro tags for products, right? It just opens up doors like anything for, for laying out an infrastructure. In fact, the entire ecosystem with POS integrations, with the sensor devices, getting merchants on board, laying out a, a data network, right? Being able to collect just micro-location data, user behavior data, lots and lots of it, and making that available to, to guys like third-party developers, right? And, and, and the third one, in, 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 the, in the development of apps as well, which, are, which provide just a, an amazing consumer experience because they have all this data to work off of. So to give you an example, at, at SK Planet, we're laying out that ecosystem with integrations with all POSs, with you know, sensor devices at most merchants, and, uh, and an app SDK, which third-party developers can use to, to provide a, a very rewarding experience for the consumers and a very a, a magical shopping experience for the consumers. So I think the opportunities for entrepreneurs in all these areas for the next three to five years are tremendous. Okay. So two of you touched on mobile a little bit. So while the vertical itself is, is different, uh, some of the companies we work, we, we're talking to, and we sort of prospect customers and prospective customers, they have, and they, when, they, when you talk to them about big data, there are a lot of conflicting priorities. Barring the top four or five retailers, the amount of resources, whether it's uh, capital, whether it's more than capital, it's the, uh, their human capital, uh, the folks who know their business, their bandwidth is limited. Right, so the, every year they have to make decisions on which initiatives do we work on versus not. And mobile right now, it's turning for retail specifically, it's sort of becoming the glue that's bringing all the channels together, right? In the past, companies say, okay, I have retail stores and I have e-commerce and they stood on a separate divisions even located in different geographies. Mobile is forcing them to bring everything together, right? So there, there's a lot of initiatives around mobile that are actually really exciting that are going on. So when you think about allocation of human capital as well as cash to, to big data initiatives, um, you talked about opportunities for entrepreneurs, but keeping this in mind, do you guys have any advice for companies who are thinking about stepping into our, or trying to make a decision on is big data right for me or not as they work with these other priorities? And Navneet, I guess we can start with you. Yeah, no, my, uh my advice for, for anybody looking to get started with big data and, and uh, using big data analysis to drive direct business value, as we talked about earlier, my, my first advice is don't wait till you have terabytes and terabytes of data, mm -hmm. right? Uh, start thinking about your personalization objectives, your recommendations, your, your overall business objectives <laughs> right away. And uh, you know, once you once you have that big data, uh, don't just build fancy dashboards for for executives on it. Right? Make it actionable, and make it actionable in as automated a way as as as, as possible. Right? 
Uh, you're always going to have the, the problem, what we call the cold start problem. Right? When you start out, you don't have enough data. How do you provide a great data-driven cons consumer experience to a consumer when you don't know anything about them? So when you don't have first-party data, right? when you don't have enough first-party data collected, think about uh, buying, acquiring third-party data. And there's plenty of good third-party data. There's plenty of companies like Blue Kai, Axiom, others that you know, for, for marketers and for commerce, you can use that data to right away provide a good experience. So, so that would be my advice to, uh, to people starting out. Okay. To the retailers, I would say, never let an IT guy lead, in, lead a biz, big data project. You know, <laughs> I would say that you, in fact, you should not have any project without a business sponsor. And for the startups in the crowd, I would say, here's your opportunity. You can be that business person because most retailers are struggling. Um, and so if you, again, going back to like what retailers care about the most, you know, one is customer engagement, customer insights, getting understanding who their customer is. The second is around you know, what products should they carry to serve that customer, merchandising, that type of stuff. And then supply chain you know, to be able to deliver with all the disruption that's happening. Each one of these are massive opportunities. And so first thing to do is to find out where, which of these three are your problem areas so that you can direct your big data initiatives to solve that specific problem. You have to start with the problem and work backwards because you know, it can very easily, people can very easily get fascinated with all the, the fancy you know, cloud-based architectures that are coming up and have this boil the ocean type of a project. Um, and so depending on the specific initiative that's, that's burning for your company, like are you, are you struggling with trying to attract new customers, or are you struggling with efficiencies in your supply chain, or are you struggling with, with new product introduction type of stuff, whatever that problem is, and f you know, work backwards from there uh, to be able to invest in the right technologies to make that happen. And, and for the entrepreneurs, I would say is, is identify the retailers who are struggling the most in each of these areas, and that's your opportunity, because um, uh, there are quite a few of them. Those are great points. Um, I think I would just add that, I mean, you're right, retailers have so many different priorities that they're thinking about today. Obviously, mobile has impacted that greatly. I had, I had one channel I had to worry about and try to optimize before, and I spent 15 years optimizing it, and now, people on the mobile phone, I think the mobile phone is changing the way they're engaging everywhere and the way they view retail. I can get everything I want on demand um, and I want it to be about me. And now there's even bigger wealth of, of information that I have access to. So if I were thinking about priorities, big data is actually the one that will hit across all of your channels and can take that kind of shift in user mindset and solve it across to everything. So I think if I were thinking it through, you know, what do I tackle? Do I tackle mobile? Do I continue to optimize desktop? Do I add big data elements? Um, I think I focus on big data and exactly as you said, um, what, what is your objective? You can't apply it everywhere at once. What's your objective and then what is your success criteria? How do you know this is gonna actually be successful after you've applied it? Okay, thank you. So without naming the retailer, and what I'm sharing is public information, um, some, some of the things retailers are working on right now as we speak, some are in pilot mode is, for example, if you're walking in a mall and the store's nearby and they see you have an unused gift card or an unused uh, uh, points on their rewards card, they will send ping you and say, do you want to come in? We are close by. Because the perceived value of both the gift cards as well as your reward points is a little bit less than cash, so it's easier to get the customer in. <clears throat> Another retailer right now is working on, if you are uh, in their aisles, they're actually uh, uh, piloting a scan and go program where you can scan items. You take a scanner in addition to your grocery cart or whatever cart you are in, and th this is not a grocery retailer. And as you are taking items off the shelf, you're scanning them right there so that instead of going to the self-checkout lane and scanning them there, you're scanning. So as you're scanning items on the aisles, they're working on algorithms behind the scenes to cross-sell and upsell right there in the aisle while they are shopping, right? So while all this is going on, um, so you will see this coming uh, out of pilot mode soon, so this is not the future, this is gonna be happening soon. What other opportunities, like where do we go from here? Where do retailers go from here? 
what, based on your conversations, what do you think is coming next for big data as far as retail is concerned? Okay, I'll go first. So if you look at retail commerce, right, 90% of the commerce is still offline, right? So, and 10%, you know, is, is, is e-commerce. And in that 10%, it's amazing how much do retailers know about their consumers, right? You know, every click, every pass through the journey, how many people dropped out of the shopping cart, where did they come from, did a search <coughs> drive them to come to the website, et cetera, et cetera. So you know everything about, or the retailers know everything about that consumer. The 90% is wide open, you know, where you look at physical retail, where majority of the commerce is still, they don't know, they know very little about their consumers. Like when did, how long do people spend in their stores before they buy something? And that whole area, you know, all that innovation that you saw in the online world is, is now hitting the physical world as well. You know, um, Navneet talked about, to, talked about beacons and stuff, right? So where it's almost, that's where sort of IoT and, and big data come together, where now, Basically, you know how many people come into your store. You know how long they have been there. You know what, what aisles they're visiting, what products they're touching, what products they're not touching. Every one of this is a, is a great opportunity where essentially it gives more. The touch points between a, a retail enterprise and an end consumer are just exploding. And that, you know, as, as Abnish was alluding to earlier, is exposing a lot of holes in their current infrastructures where... Uh, they're not able to connect those dots. You know, the consumer is demanding, obviously, a consistency of experience regardless of how they entertain. Like you expect, you know, when you like something on Facebook or when you talk about, talk about products or retailers, you expect the retailers to know about you and be able to serve and have that consistency of experience. So the offline world, I would say, is, is wide open and mobile is driving that convergence, which opens up a lot of opportunities. Thanks, Krish. So we are officially out of time, Oops. but I guess we can take 30 seconds each to finish up this question. And then uh, if you guys have uh, more questions for the panel, they'll be available outside. Sure. I'll just, uh, I'll just add to, to what Krish said. I'm, I'm very focused on brick-and-mortar retail, and I really do think what's, what's next is just a transformation of, of, the, of the shopping experience. Today, it can be a frustrating journey through a store. I want that journey to be rewarding, to be very, very convenient, and to be personal, the customer service, very personalized. Today, my wife enjoys go shopping. I'm looking forward to the day that I'll enjoy go shopping. <laughs> oh no, I, 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 we'll talk, I enjoy shopping. Um, I'll, I'll help. I think uh, that's totally true for the, for the majority of retailers who so they have physical locations. It's all about the personal connection there's a store associate or somewhere, someone who can help me. There are many retailers that are online only, and I think their next evolution is figuring out how to bring that same type of experience online. How can I, you know, I, I know you've come, you've come to this e-commerce site a gazillion times. I shouldn't act like it's the first time that you came. Um, I should treat you accordingly. So I think for those online only retailers, it's trying to emulate that same experience without the actual physical, physical location. Thank you. So thanks a lot, folks, and a big round of applause for Christy, Christian, and me.